Finally, we have some good news. Three of the lockdown fraudsters who decided to sign dodgy contracts with the government over PPE and misuse taxpayers' money have been arrested. Okay, so we do have some good news today, um, but I'm also going to be quite cautious about this because on the one hand, we have talked about the PP contracts uh, throughout the whole lockdown period. Uh, we've talked about the dodgy failures of uh, governments and politicians, at least when it came to complacency. Sometimes it seems complicit. And when it came to the contracts with Pfizer and Moderna on certain issues and boosters. But when it comes to justice, a little bit of justice has now been served. Three PP fraudsters, um, after stealing, essentially stealing £29 million worth of taxpayers' money, have finally been arrested. But there's still so many of them out there. There's still so many who are being sold to us as they are still legitimate PP contractors. They are still not just PP. They are legitimate private contractors in other departments. It's been going on for decades, by the way. Um, but apparently those are legitimate even though they are still dodgy contracts. But at least, at least, they've gone after someone. So, well done. The National Crime Agency, who were behind this, they said that, that one of the three individuals, a man in his 50s, set up a UK company with the sole purpose of running a fraudulent uh, scheme to profit from PPE, PPE shortages at the start of uh, the pandemic. The man's wife is accused of laundering proceeds uh, from the fraudulent company, while a third 39-year-old man is also suspected of aiding the scheme. So, it seems like when it comes to fraudsters, and they still matters, and these people should be arrested, it seems like they went after the little people, the little fraudsters, uh, because clearly that just seems to be like a family business, family con. And there are still, what about all the big, big corporations and all the, some of the big funders? But uh, again, clearly that's legitimate. The other problem that I have with this is that, yes, go after the fraudsters. Well done. Get them, catch them. But when it comes to basic accountability of governance, is anybody going to be held accountable for signing those contracts inside government? Those civil servants, those government advisors. The ministers who just turned a blind eye or were tricked or fooled into it. Is anybody going to start some sort of inquiry to hold those people accountable? We, you know, we don't have to go too far and say, well, let's just arrest all of them without ev evidence that they, you know, they claim that they are all criminals. But at least at best, minimum expectations should be, they should still be held accountable. They should still be questioned uh, as to why you didn't have a proper procedure to make sure you don't get tricked by fraudsters, right? If we go benefit of the doubt for the sake of the argument. No, so far, nothing. But maybe if we put enough pressure when we do these videos on these channels, which we continue to get more hits and views than the mainstream media, with your support, maybe one day we will put more ideas into their heads <laughs> to actually do something about it. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section on my 2C and we are the media.